Yo, what is good? How is everybody? Welcome to episode number five of the Be it, Be Yourself, Do It Yourself podcast presented by the 914 Collective. Um, <laughs> I'm literally <laughs> sitting here for like seven minutes and, and the countdown's going on and you're like, you should take off your hoodie. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I got you, I got you. And then I like, and then I just see myself on the screen, I'm like, why is that guy wearing a hoodie? Like, <laughs> As he's sweating. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not. It's nice, bro. <laughs> this is my guest this week, a longtime friend, my buddy Phil Giganti. So welcome, Phil, to the show. Thank you. Um, if you are listening to this now, if you're here in the chat and here, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, if you are um, listening to this post, a.k.a. on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening to, Please subscribe on whatever you like, and if you want to share this, it's cool. My Phil, um, we'll get into it, but Phil plays in a band called Maintenance. Um, he's a musician and a longtime friend, and uh, I love him a whole lot, and appreciate him being here. Um, yes, yeah, so let's. Uh, we're gonna hop into the to the thing. Let me put on my little intro. That is the Yonkers, the Yonkers New York the anthem. special anthem. The anthem. The anthem, bro. That is our anthem, dude. Phil, thanks for being here, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. I, uh, I, uh, I when you know when I thought of like the first couple of people I was gonna have, it was all like uh, people. I thought of people that I just been friends with for a long time. One to get like good at this, like to try to get good at like talking to people on a medium like this, um, but. Also, you know, just because it's, uh, you know, I want I want us to all be able to tell our story because I feel like in the 914, we don't we don't just talk about it. We be about it, as Nelson Perdomo said two weeks ago in the chat. And I thought that was really cool. Um, but he's right. Like, I think that a lot of friends that we grew up with are like out doing their thing and yeah. doing it, doing it yeah. for like the right reasons and, and, and whatnot. So you were one of the first people. Like, what I was going to say is you were one of the first people that I wanted to get on here. Cool. And you're here, episode I number five. It. I made it. What, in the first uh, top ten, bro. For, I made it. That's uh, that's impressive. I mean, like you put that. You let's see the rest of that dais that is up there too. You got the top five. You got like, you got Mike Terry. Mike Terry was number episode number one. That's. I mean, like you know what I mean. Like, okay, we got Mike. We got <laughs> Donald Perdomo. <Tell. laughs> yeah, it's my. You know. Long, long time boy was that's a legend. Long, long, number two, that's a legend. Got me into honestly the dude that like got me into like throwing shows and going to shows and all that stuff. Legend, yeah, hundred percent. And then uh, yeah, then we had Robin, Ro- Robin, and, and his Can- sister and, and Candace. Yeah, because you know they're fam. Talk about about it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> straight up, bro. Like we got Robin, you know, super artsy, super art, and you got Candace who's killing it in the yoga. The champagne game. yogini. And, yeah, killing it in the yoga game. <laughs> dude, the DIY culture. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, dude, where do you want to start? Let's talk, maybe you want to bring it, uh, you want to bring it way back to, you, all right, let's bring it back to this. The first time I ever saw you, oh, wow, this is going to be like a loving, gazingly, like, oh, I gazed into your <laughs> eyes. No, the first time I ever saw you, uh, you were wearing a Bad Brains t-shirt. This was in high school. I was a junior and you were a freshman. And you were wearing a Bad Brains t-shirt, and uh, it was black and yellow, and you were also wearing black and yellow Nikes, maybe like Air Force Ones, I don't know. <laughs> they kind of looked air, they were like the high top joints with the yeah, strap. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you were just like fresh as fuck, but I immediately- Probably these same jeans, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same size. Uh, yeah. Ra- maybe a little bit, I've probably grown into them, but- Yeah, yeah, and it was around the time- he probably, dude. You're like we've been the same. I think we feel like we've both been the same size forever. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, it was probably around the same time that uh, like wearing band T-shirts became was a, a thing. Was a cool thing. Yeah. And I was like so butthurt about this guy. About <laughs> this fucking guy. I was so well, so butthurt about the fact that people were wearing band T-shirts and in middle school I got picked on for wearing band T-shirts. That like anyone that wore one, I got real defensive if they weren't like about it. You know, 
And there was a bunch of kids in our high school that started wearing band T-shirts, and I was like, "What?" And I was like, "I'm not gonna lie, with when you with the fresh matching kicks, I was like, this like, guy, yeah, <laughs> he's like, only got one thing, yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't he, know a single bad brain song. He doesn't check song. off anything else. He little did he know, <laughs> he doesn't know any bad brain songs. But little did I know that Phil is definitely a, a real one. Phil is a, a an OG punk. Um, yeah, so that was the first, that's the first time I remember seeing you, and we became friends throughout that. But let's go a little bit further back than when we became friends, because you were playing guitar already going into high school, right? So, all right, so we're, what kind of – when when did you start playing, how did, and how did that all come about? I'm going to say uh, – so I've been, I've been living in Yonkers for my whole life, um, and – I grew up in an apartment building. My dad has always played music. My dad is a musician. My dad played guitar. Um, my mom... Shout did, out Big Phil. Shout out Big Phil. Shout out Big Phil. I don't know if he knows how to use Twitch or any of that, but... You know, shout He'll out. hear this at He'll some point. He'll hear this at some point. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he was, uh, you know, big uh, uh, a big influence on, on my music uh, influence. You know, a lot of hard rock, heavy metal... Uh, Black Sabbath, you know, like that old school kind of, yeah. you know, um, so, and then growing up in an apartment, it was always cool because he would play and I wanted to play with him, but not be him. Cause it would always be like, we would go out to like family vacations for my mom's side of the family and they're completely different. They're like super like Midwestern reserved from like detroit or something michigan right? yeah yeah yeah. Michigan. all of the, her yeah, whole fam- yeah her whole family's from michigan yeah, yeah. so we go out there every year and here comes big phil with the guitars with the tattoos yeah. you know what i mean he's the man he's drinking beer with all the kids and you know what i mean yeah. so and then i remember i started playing guitar because i was like i wanted to play the drums because i figured you know um he he plays guitar i could play drums i could have my own identity that wasn't happening because I was in an apartment. It was like you're just yeah, yeah you're just gonna play guitar, yeah. and I mean in the long run I'm grateful for it because I feel like I just like playing guitar more. But I, I initially I wanted to start playing the drums because I I always felt that like I don't want to say it's like an identity thing, but like it was like a a thing of and his name is also Phil too. You know, very yeah. creative. Yeah, yeah. We come from a very creative family bro, my with dad, art. My, my dad's Anthony, bro. <laughs> we come from a very you're you're a great musician, great conversationalist. You named your kid after yours. It's the same. You gotta think of a different name that you liked besides your own name. So vain. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But um, so I I wanted to play the drums. So I ended up playing. I was like, you know what? I'll play guitar. He had a lot of equipment around, so it was cool. You know, I was getting good at it. But again, you know, I would go visit family, and and yep. he'd be the man at playing. I was just starting out. You know what I mean? So I was a little bit um taken back buy it you know and I, I didn't have that many friends that played guitar you know my parents are actually much older than a lot of my friends parents and i've noticed that as i've grown up yeah um i mean they're not like super old and they're not you know they're but um but just the style of music that i grew up on and, and the influence that they how they raised me was a little bit different i think so and then i kind of drifted away from music um playing wise but i always listen to it you know um i've got a buddy so big phil put me on to like I'm going to say like 10, you know, with like metal, yep. like Antichrist, like Black Sabbath, like this is like the heaviest it's going to get, you know? Right. And then I'm about like 13 and then I meet my buddy uh, Angel through one of my best friends, Anthony, and his dad is the lead singer of a deathcore band from the Bronx called Go to Mentis. And he showed me that there's an 11. He showed me Slayer. Oh, nice. He showed me Christ illusion. Nice. <laughs> hey, how, how old are you here? 13. Okay, okay. 12, 13. And my parents are totally cool with, like, my dad is like, you know what I mean? He's not, he's not a fan of this, but it was, just, it was just like, wow, this makes sense. Because my world was so, like, it was just up to that. You know what I mean? It was yep. it was it was like the Black Sabbath and the Deep Purple and yep. and all that. And and don't get me wrong, they put me onto all the other great stuff, Motown and blues and rock. You know, they're big like musician fans, like family. You know, right? But then I heard Slayer. Yeah. I heard. I was listening to Iced Earth. They nice. put me onto shit like that, like heavier shit. Um, who's that really? Uh, what was the one that he he dug a lot? Uh. 
I want to say that he, he was into like the like cannibal corpse and stuff like that. Like really like, he- and I don't even listen to heavy stuff like that. Currently, I appreciate it, but like it was just like, damn, that shit, that's heavy. So, so now you know what I mean. So I I carry this with me. You know, fourteen year old kid now going into high school. Uh, and at the time, so you're playing guitar a little bit. Are you playing like? Are you, what are you learning? Like, what do you know how to play? I'm playing. Oh, that's it. I don't really. I remember. So it's funny because I remember like seeing you play guitar for the first time and being like, "Oh, like this kid can play." Mm-hmm. Uh, some at some point in high school, but I I don't remember the, the what point that was in our friendship at all. Like I don't. That, 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 I'm a little blurry. On that. Yeah. So, so let me think. So I, I'm probably when I was 11. I got guitar lessons over in Mount Vernon. There was a music school. I studied with Mr. A, and I used to take acoustic guitar lessons with Mr. Andolini. <laughs> okay. I like, that he had old... to, I like that he had to go by Mr. He was Mr. A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a cool guy, but that's what they just called him at the music school. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean? I Older that. guy, you know? And uh, I remember he would he would show up to, you know, I, I, would, I would show up to the class. Did you practice? No. All right, well, this is what we could work on for the class. You know, I, I took it serious, but it was like there wasn't that connection. And I, right, right. and I mean, I'd like to, I always like to hear your perspective on this coming from like an, an education perspective because of trying to teach a kid, like trying to get a kid to be motivated to play an instrument. It's hard sometimes. Yeah. You have to, you really have to, and that's why I like teaching, um, that's why I like teaching like so, uh, one on one lessons because you can, find more individually what this what that kid specifically liked yeah but um yeah no it's hard it's 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 tough it's it's that it's you have to and and the hard part about it is that kids oftentimes have no idea what they like yep you know most that's what yeah they want you to tell them right they want you to tell them most of the time they don't know what they like so it's like there's sometimes i'll have a kid come in and just be like i like this band and i'm like oh sick that's tight. Like, mm-hmm. cool. We can learn a song by that band, but a lot of the, a lot of kids don't. They don't really know, so you just kind of have to keep showing them things until you start to realize what they like. You yeah, know? that this gravitates more to them, and right. And I, that's why I like. That's st- tough, though. It is tough. No, and then on top of that, the teacher, the parents will have expectations too. Of course. Yeah. No. So I, I, I want eight, Anthony. Please teach my son how to play guitar. No one calls me Anthony. <laughs> AJ, <laughs> please teach my son how to play guitar. You know what I mean? It's the same. It's same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I do it. I feel you. I when I, I took lessons. I don't know if I ever told you this, but I took lessons when I was six or seven. I know. Th- I know a lot about you. Okay, that's. that's I got a good map. No, as in, I, I, I remember a lot of things. I remember you told me that you and Brandon used to take the same guitar teacher. Yeah, we did. But so and that's but, why you guys are nice with fingerstyle because this guy was uh, apparently like a nice fingerstyle player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, so I, um, I, I did my research before I came. In. Jamie, look <laughs> that up for me, please. <laughs> Jamie, look that up. Yeah, Joe, Joe, <laughs> we bring it up on the screen. No, um, f- uh, Jamie, look that up. Uh, See where where AJ uh, and, and Brandon did uh, guitar lessons. Matt, dude, we're gonna one day we'll have a Jamie on this podcast, just like <laughs> Joe Rogan. Um, all right, so you're uh, six, you start. But yeah, I start. I started playing guitar when I was like six or seven. That's fucking early. Uh, yeah, excuse did, my language. That's early. It didn't work. It didn't work. It, what happened was I didn't want to do it. I didn't know anything about playing. Like my parents were just like, "Oh, we're just gonna have this kid try everything, right?" It was one of those, and then uh, when I was like 10, 10, I saw my friend play electric guitar. He played Smoke on the Water during the <laughs> elementary school. Shout out, uh, Mike Stefanik played uh, electric guitar during the elementary school talent show, and my other friend, Alex Greco, sang. And uh, I don't know if these guys even realize that they, like, just that moment right there, I was like, yo, I, I really want, I remember going to my mom right after that and being like, I really want an electric guitar. That's amazing. And then that was it. Yeah, that's when I found it at 10 is when, and I was lucky, very lucky to have met John Sipa around the same time. And he was also learning how to play the bass. So we really learned together. That's cool. And that, that helps I, a I lot. Had, yeah, I had a friend. I had a friend that was, like, learning with me. And we were figuring out music that we liked together also. You know, like, we were... It, so that part was big, but anyway, I didn't want. Let's let's go back. No, I feel no, because and that's why I'm asking too, because especially because I know you started at an early age. Because I remember I saw you at. I'll talk about this later, but so I saw you at an early age with John Sipa. Yeah, we were like twelve or thirteen at that point, playing live. Yep. yep. And and I didn't know you, and and nor would I know you for I was ten at that point. Then technically, if you're twelve. Yep. Right. 
Yeah, we didn't know each other for at least four I did, years. I was just like, who is that? And like, I was like, that's cool, you know? So, but that world never meshed into my world. So now I was taking guitar lessons when I was 11. I started with Mr. A. I would come in every week, not practice acoustic guitar, right? But, you know, I still got this drive from Big Phil, like all the cool stuff. And I'm like, why am I learning the C chord? Why am I learning the G chord? I don't really care yeah. about Mel Bay, volume one. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah no, I mean, like, yeah. At the no. time, it, it just wasn't. But so, and it's funny because, you know, and I used to sit outside. I used to always get there early. My mom used to drop me up for early. I used to always sit outside and the kid before me would sit there. And he was a little bit older than me. And he's listening to Duality by Bayside. I don't know this. Oh, nice. I, don't, I don't know this song at this point. And I'm like. That's a good song. That's a really good song. I like that. Um, Shout out to Anthony. Ramirez. That's that's down -na 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 -na, off the Walking Wounded, right? Uh, no, d d Duality. That's no, I'm sorry. He's listening to yeah. He's listening to Duality off the Walking Wounded. Some days. Yeah. Like he's listening to that. Yeah, okay. I'm like, wow, that's a good song. I didn't know what it was. You know what I mean? And then it just kind of just blew over my head. Like I heard it. So, you know, still taking guitar lessons with Mr. A. I'm like, Mom, I'm done with this. You know what I mean? I don't want to do it anymore. I, I've always played sports my whole life. Probably did, up until high school. Probably up until high school. Yeah, I did I did too. That's the thing, again, I, where the I, parents I, put you into everything. To, yeah, yeah, I found guitar, though. And it was, yeah. I, I stopped caring. Yeah. It's funny because I didn't care. I would always care about baseball. And then, like, martial arts was cool. And then I would stop doing that, but I would still, like, always play a sport. Like, it would either be basketball, like, especially when I was getting a little bit taller than some of the other kids. And then I didn't grow, uh, like, you know what I mean? That moment where you're, like, a couple inches taller and you're just like, that's a big deal. So it was, like, awesome. So I was like, I'll play this sport. You know what I mean? Um, but then, so I'm about 13, 14. I don't really care about playing. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm now, I'm about to enter a new stage in my life at this point. You know what I mean? Like in retrospect, I'm not thinking these thoughts in my head at 13, but like in, in, in this, in the grand scheme of life at 13, I'm about to move into the next stage of my life. 14 years old. Who am I going to be? Who's this individual that I want to be? And you know, I, I never, never tried to like to be anything that I wasn't trying to be. But it's it's an it's, it's a scary time, especially because everybody was like, "Oh, you're going to a school with older kids." You yeah. know what I mean? You don't, dude. You not you at 13, 14, 15, and I know a couple of the guys that are listening right now are younger. Yo, just be yourself, because yeah. it, it is really yeah, it, is, it, it is. is a time where you're kind of pressured by other people to be something. Like yeah. this group of fans want. Yo, just always just just be yourself. It's literally the name of this podcast, and that's why I wanted to kind of reinforce that because that was a really good point. I think it was, dude. It's it's a weird time. Like I yeah. didn't. I was like, what? I, it wasn't. <sighs> and and for you to see me that day and to be wearing a bad brain shirt and be like, I don't know if this kid knows what he's talking about. I mean, I'd like to say that I did, but at the end of the day, I really didn't because I really didn't know the individual that I was going to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, I still don't, and like I, I always like. Oh, I have, dude, none of us. Yeah, like, like, none of us yeah, do. No, I like having this conversation with with uh, friends, and and then when and just being able to be like, I don't know what I want to be when I get older. You know what I mean? And like yeah, to dude. say that, and it's like we, I'm like thinking like, damn, like high school was such a weird time to think that we were expected to know exactly what we wanted to do to put ourselves in. You know what I mean? Some kind of. See, Joshy gets it. Joshy gets it. Yeah, dude, Joshua gets it. He knows. But so now I'm 14 going into high school. I'm still playing music, but I don't really care to play music because my friends don't play music. You know what I mean? At, at the end of the day, like, it was just like, it was kind of like what so I was doing. surrounded by. Yeah, it was, and then I was going into, it was a big time. It's a big ch time in my life, you know, changing. So 14 years old in a, in a new school that's you know what i mean and, and it's a big school it's, and coming from the elementary school that i went to i pretty much knew everybody in my school now i'm going to school i don't know anybody and i remember they took away one of my free periods i no, they took away my lunch period and as a freshman you you just get lunch All right yeah so now i have a fourth period free and that's it so i'm hanging out with the big dogs you know what i mean was it that was that us well, at at this point, it was nobody because I was a freshman. You know yeah, what I mean. But I feel like I had the fourth period Ex free. Right? We're getting there. We're okay. getting there. Okay. We're get. We're just. We're still in the mind of of this guy right now. Of of him coming into the. You know what I mean. I just found out that I got fourth period free. I'm like, shit. You know. Oh, that was when we were in the arena with like Oliver and. So yeah. so now I'm like, well, I don't know what to do Shout with my. Oliver. Yeah, I don't know what to do with my free time. You know what I mean? Like, what 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 can I be doing? At a fourth period free, 
and I'm I'm grateful that I found guys like you and Oliver that kind of took me under their wing. You know what I mean? And it was like a nice, solid group that year that ended up being like the oldest was John in the 12th, you guys, and then we had some friends that were in the 10th grade, like Nick, James, James, who I still play with. Yeah, man. And then me, Brandon, and I had a good grade too. You it's kind of it's kind of crazy how we're like all still together, dude. That's like, what I'm saying. That's yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. So that was like an ultimate year of like us being like, wow, like so. You guys take me under your wing as like this 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 stray little you know freshman pigeon that he he just fell out of the nest. He's a, he got no lunch period with any of his friends. Like I didn't know anybody at that point. You know what I mean? Because it's like all my friends had a different lunch period. So who am I gonna? You know what I mean? What am I going to do during a fourth period free? Yeah, man. So I meet you guys. You guys take me under your wing. And a lot's changed since then, man. I mean, I remember. So so John is one of those people where we were talking about the bad brains. We're talking about Sipa? Yeah. Or I saw him today. Oh, my God. What a legend. I haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> I saw him for today for the, for the first time He's in a long time. I love, when he, I love when he goes on those descriptive weather when he used to do those, like I tried to get him on, I tried to get him on the podcast, not to interrupt you, and he was just like, nah. He's like, you know <laughs> he what? Want it. He's not, it's not his thing, dude. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah. If he was in the podcast, he would have had like, he should have been like, a, he's a legend. I asked him to be my first guest. He's, that's what I'm saying. He was supposed to be. He like, deserves. I, he, because I mean, like I said to you before, like without him, dude, I absolutely would not be doing yeah. anything I'm doing right now. That guy, yeah. him and I grew up yeah. doing everything together. So and it's funny because you and you're saying that. You know, the other two kids that you saw, right, that played um, music, right, at the middle, at the elementary school. So mm-hmm. now I'm fresh into this school. It's you, uh, Ed Polo, who also had a free period, had a free period. I mean, and I'm young at this point, too. So I kind of I started, you know what I mean, just hanging out with the crew that would, you know, like to party and hang out a little bit. Nothing crazy, but you know what I mean? So and then Ed would show me like. Going over to his house after school, you know what I mean? Smoking weed, like introduced me to that. A little bit of music, jamming. Like jamming was such a foreign concept to me because it was like I could play with other people. Like yeah, yeah. I was like, what the? F-? And he would let me plug into like his dad's like giant DFX boxes, and I'm like, oh, like what the? F-? Like I'm yeah. just so used to just like having like a little practice amp and like playing in my apartment and like not and stopping after a certain time. And so Sipa, you know, we start talking about the bad brains and he's like, you know what? I have all the new, like, I remember at this time, this was amazing. He's like, I have the new bad brains album that they put out. He said, I have another album that they put out and I just got, <laughs> I think at this, I don't know what, at 2009, I don't know, I don't know what year, um, nothing to prove is. 2008 or 7 or 8. Burned, talk- it on, burned it on a DVD-R. Talking H2O for yeah. anybody listening. H2O, nothing to prove. Great album. So, and then he puts, so he puts Build a Nation by Bad Brains. All new Bad Brains stuff that, like, within the past, you know, the, the 2000s. And then he put on the other one, uh, I and I, I think is on it. I forget which, which album. He put another album on there. H2O, nothing to prove. And uh, Sick of It All. Um, Shout out Richie Yeah Sick of it all uh, What's the one With death or jail on it Oh um, I think it's just Is it just called I, that I think it might just be It's called death or jail Yeah I think so So yeah So he burnt me a DVD-R Who's that uh, Oh two tomatoes Hot two tomatoes What's good Welcome I don't That's probably like a Jason That's a Jason kind of Thank you for the follow Yeah that's a Jason He's a tomato Yeah yeah, he, yeah, yeah. OMG a tomato yeah, yeah. Shout probably. out OMG a tomato. That might be Jason. Shout out OMG a pineapple. Shout out that whole crew. Identify yourself. Anyway, uh, you were saying you got a CD burn. Yeah, so he burned me this whole CD of like of stuff that I kind of knew but didn't know. I didn't know that the Bad Brains was still putting out stuff, you know? And he put me onto H2O. My God, that changed my life, bro. I was like amazed at like that. And that's what I'm saying. I came from a not a sheltered world but a world that I was like, you know, where music was taking me. Like, I was exposed to all the music that my friends were listening to. Right, right. But nothing past that. Nothing that was heavy. Nothing that was, you know what I mean? Because I wasn't playing with other people. And then I kind of got to just appreciate that. And I fell into that. I didn't, I stopped playing sports, you know. Um, 
I wish I still it, did play it sports. All, the real punks stop. No, I'm just saying, not the real <laughs> punks. We all stop playing sports. I think th- I. You know I there's some punk ass people playing sports though. That's what it is. That's what it is. I'm like, damn. I think I'm one of those punks. I should have like, cause all my friends were punks and they didn't play sports, and I was just like, ah, fuck it. I'm just. Well, it's kind of funny because Sipa was always speaking of John Sipa. He was so fucking athletic, dude. That guy was so good at every sport he played. Damn. He played on. I don't even think he played JV. I think he played right on varsity baseball in ninth grade. I believe it. And then after ninth grade. Yeah, yeah just like, hey, like, <laughs> like you yeah, don't want to yeah. do it anymore. Same. same thing. And and it's it sucks because, I mean, you know what it is? It's a big commitment. Sports, you know it's what I mean? A, it is a commitment. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I, I do like about the punk rock, what, uh, what I like still like about sports and punk rock and tying it over into each other is just the community. You know what I mean? Uh, 100%. Terry, Mike Terry. I remember we used to have baseball scrimmages, and he would be the guy that would like always be down to be like, "I'm down. Let me know where the when? scrimmage is." Oh, pff, who knows? Like five, six years ago, oh, okay, okay. I would just hit him up. I, I, thought, just... I thought we're talking. I'm still we're still in like ten. No, years no, ago no, 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 okay. no. A little bit older. A little bit older. Okay, but like you. Terry would be, would be the one that would, would, and Terry is one of those first people that I probably met in this music scene. But Terry would always come to, you know, sport. It, it's just like it's. I don't want to say that, like, you're right that the, there's, like, a, the punk rocks that kind of just c- kind of steer away from sports, but then there's that punk that I, like, appreciate sports, but then I don't I don't really like to watch sports and, like, hang out and watch sports or identify myself as a sports person. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, for, so for me, I don't know. If as I wear this Yankee hat, but, yeah, like, I'm, yeah. I'm a diehard Dead Yankee ass, fan. Though. Dead ass, though. <laughs> I'm a diehard Yankee fan. I love watching a New York team win. I mean, sports are just... I feel you. Dude. It's just out of control, and it, it's I, like I love I because I genuinely love going to a Yankee game. Yeah, I grew up loving wrestling, and even when I watch wrestling now, I still like love watching it. Even though I just the commitment, like you, even the commitment to watching it and like following along the storyline is just so much for me that I just don't do it anymore. I feel you. And then, but I don't. It's not like when I would go, my brother would play basketball in high school, and I loved going That's to his fun. games, bro. I loved it. Like it was fun. It's and then, fun I mean, to watch. I don't yeah. really consider this a sport as much, but like for me, hand in hand, like I had punk rock, but I also had skateboarding and those things. That is for a me, sport. I consider that a sport. Uh, yeah, it's it's a little. It's it, it's a sport, but there's no rules, and which is part of it. Um, True. It is competitive though. There is competitive skateboarding, and there's a community. So it's like, that, it's like but those what? things went hand in hand for me. Like yeah. for, that's how I grew up in the DIY world was punk rock and skateboarding at the same time, and uh, just kind of making life about those two things. You know, technically, I mean, like music kind of is a sport if you want to think about it. Then too. Oh, this is new. Oh yeah, I was, I was gonna bring that up in a bit, but I, I was gonna ask you some more questions about this, but I didn't want to. I was gonna ask you as a tattoo. Uh, we'll talk tattoos in a few minutes. Okay, got right. you. Because I I got a couple questions about this too. Okay, cool. But all right, so all right, so yeah, you and I let's 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 let's, let's backtrack. Let's all right, backtrack. So slash. this guy burns me the CD, right? Yeah, yeah, Is that yeah. where we left off? Is that a good point to let leave off? Yeah. So you're you're in high school. John Sipa burns you a CD, changes your like kind of perspective on music a little bit. Twelve. Right. He showed me that he showed me that not only do my friends' dads listen to this, my I could find friends my age that right. gravitates towards this. Right. So it was a game changer. Did you did you play in a band in high school? No. I didn't think so. Cause I was no. Gonna, yeah, no, I didn't think so. Did you go to our like did you went to the shows though? Like Yeah. You went to like Yeah, yeah, yeah of course you did. Yeah. Um because I remember um I remember you went to uh like, do you, do you remember that show in the arena? There was a show that we did in the arena. It was like Captain Falcone and Away with Words. I feel like there was like a lot of homies. Jason, if Jason's still watching, Jason was definitely there. Uh, there was like a show in the arena, I, and I think we masked it. And I masked it. We did. I think we donated money. I don't remember how much. It could have been fucking ten bucks. But we were like, we just want to raise money for some charity, but really we <laughs> want to just throw a show. We had nowhere to throw shows. So we did it in the arena and we told I don't it. think I was And I think whatever we nah. made, we donated it, but we totally didn't focus our energy on actually making that because we were just eleventh graders that wanted to like play music. No. I'm gonna tell you maybe the first earliest memory of a show that I went to that you guys played at was um like the hats charity thing. Yeah, I think you're right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, he's right. I'm glad we have like a fact checker <laughs> here. In the... J- uh, Jason, check that for us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jamie, what are you doing over there, Jamie? Come on. Um, so the the first show I remember was 
You guys rented out the Riverdale spot. The Riverdale mm-hmm. YMCA. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was the. It was like. Oh, the it was Ju- a nursing home. It was no, like no, a, it was like it a, was a Jewish community center. Community center. It was a Jewish community. I think it was something with Y. Y J M M C A. Because they. Oh no, Y M J A. They have yeah, another. It's yeah, a, yeah. Their their version, I think, of like a Y M C A, essentially. Um, yeah, yeah. We rented that out. And and we threw the show. It was away with words. I'll never forget this, dude. It was away with words. Green eggs and mayhem Green reunion. Green eggs and mayhem reunion. Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon. I, I remember. Don't remember any, uh, I, maybe another reason. Uh, uh, maybe another reason. And then uh, this really bad band with this real douchebag redhead guy played first. And I'm not. And I think I know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, but uh, you know, you, you know what it is. I know uh, who you're uh, talking about. You're talking about. Yes. Um, but anyway, so we uh, we played that. We played that. So that was the first show you remember. I think that was. Can I stop this? I'm sorry. I think I I did something that. Yeah. Hit one of the other pads. Yeah. It changes the colors. That's cool. Leave that. Yeah. That one was a little too intense. No? Yeah. Yeah. The pads change the colors. Um, so we rented out this space and we threw shows like DIY punks, dude. Like that was like the the. I don't know. That was like. A uh, very beginning of like doing the thing that has not stopped. Like that was That's what for real. Seven, sixteen, seventeen years old. I'm now twenty seven, and you're still doing it. Yeah, we're still doing. It. And you're yeah, and you're you know we're yeah. ten ten years ago that you were probably fifteen. That's crazy. 16, I Fourteen thought. probably. Yeah, that was ten years ago. Um, yeah, I would say that was probably two thousand ten. If that that makes that that adds up to me because it was probably John and their senior year. Yeah, like, you okay. guys because you guys would have. I remember there would be a couple times because because stick with it, <laughs> AJ. <laughs> what up? Get down here, get down here. Uh, he sees me. He got a notification that I was yeah. probably messing with the thing. He's like, "Oh, oh, the green light on." Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know which one does. Shout out, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. AJ knows. <laughs> All right, but anyway, so yeah, so that that was a cool show, and I think that um. That was like a very. But you guys have been doing shows before that. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That was the first one I went to. You guys would have shows. Yeah. No, no, yeah. And I was like super big on my thing and being like, oh, like I have to work like weekends because I would see you guys during the week. I remember you worked at Burks. I worked at Burks. I worked at Sal's. I would work during high school and I would like take pride in that. But I think a big part of it was like my parents probably wouldn't let me go down to the city to go catch you guys because I remember you guys played a show at Jalopy. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. and like it was not happening. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, but yeah. I was like, oh no, like guys, I gotta work. I probably could have taken off. Like, in, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I got you, dude. You just didn't want to <laughs> look at where I'm at now. I t- still work in yeah. restaurants and take off work all the time. So I, uh, I could have done it when I was 15 if I could do it now. So okay, so what did you what did you take away from 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 that? Did you take any? Do you like I, you you remember the show? Because obviously, dude, honestly, like so past past high school, I think is when like even though we were like close friends in high school and we did a lot of stupid shit together, like we were. We'll get. I want to have a conversation in a little bit about this, but we were like the kids in high school that like I ran out during the pep rally in a fucking gorilla suit and caused a mayhem, and then two years later you ran out in your Bill Clinton mask <laughs> and your speedo <laughs> causing mayhem. Like we were the stupid kids, but we were also pretty creative and we made a lot of shit. Um, but we were really dumb. Yeah, yeah, we were just dumb kids, you know. No, like, I don't think it's that. I think it. I think it comes to a point where you sometimes, like, I'm not treating my own horn because i i feel this for like like society in general i feel like we're just not challenged sometimes by school that's like what it obviously, was 100%. yeah like obviously the subject is challenging but to go through the motions is not that challenging you know what i mean like everybody <laughs> he says that sounds like me <laughs> um but i just feel like it's just like it's it's not a you know i feel like and especially at that school, I feel like where it's like we're kind of like we were kind of deemed as like an academic school, you know? Yeah, and especially we, when and we I first th- got th- in there and, and it. And we were smart kids. That was the thing is we were smart kids, and all the kids in our school were really smart. But I think that we were like, we were like the, we were like the creative goofy kids that like didn't need to be in IB classes. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? Like we had a lot of smarts up here to be like I don't need to take. 30 credits in my freshman year of high school. Yeah, I don't need to do that (laughs) because I just want to play music and and I want to do this like other cool creative thing that is an intelligence. However, it's not exactly like, 
you know, like we were deemed as like, oh, those kids are the goofballs that like ran out during the yeah. pep rally. But it's like, honestly, we were just like the creative kids that like wanted to do something. We thought of a funny, creative thing in our head. And, and we would uh, tie uh, it into something. You know yeah, what I mean? Always yeah. something would be tied in. Like <laughs> at, when we would run out, the reason why we did it was I remember I ran out at, at a pep rally because they cut the, the swim team. So right. and, and I remember we were having conversations and, and everybody in the whole school was talking about Oh, there's no swim team. We're getting our sports cut. And I was like, yo, like, you know, it'd be funny if I ran out in a Speedo. You know what I mean? Like, thinking, like, that shit, would, that would be, Yeah, like, dude. That, and, you know, and in, in honor of the swim team. And, like, obviously it was just a reason to just run out in a Speedo and cause a scene and put a, and put a, I don't know, like, an image or, or, like, a, put a, like, to challenge it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, as in, like. To just question. challenge the the idea of like being like you got to be this yeah. student that sits down at the pep rally. It was yeah. just everybody like, was talking about the swim team at that time. You know what I mean? I remember yeah. that that was being cut that year or yeah or something like that. I remember that some there was a sport that was being cut. I mean, and that's not like you know what I mean. It was just like a common thing. Like yeah, dude, it's cool. but that's what I'm saying. So we would always like try to tie it into something to be like, well, we did this, mm. and like just in case uh-huh. if I because then I would always like run it by like some of the teachers or the faculty that would be like. You know, and they like would stand. They would st- they'd stick behind you just. Yeah, to exactly. Put- be like, yo, what do you think about this idea? If I did this, would the school get mad? And they'd be like, uh, you know. But they- uh, but they but they like we were the kids that there was definitely certain teachers that are like, oh, those are the annoying kids. But there was like so many of the teachers that are like, these are the best kids because they like are doing something that they like. They're crea- They're like using their mind in a way that's not this like bland like for school school mind it's, I, uh, it's like a it's a like us throwing shows in the arena like me and john sipa getting the skate park built like you like, yeah. all, like all of our friends like coming in and doing these other things it was like it wasn't about the like it wasn't this like thing about and like we were all in that same click of like people that it wasn't we weren't like, i think we, knew. we weren't made for school dude yeah i think we, we weren't knew. made for it i think we knew that what that school wasn't going to provide what we wanted to do you know what I mean? I think school helps for people that want to study things that, you know what I mean? That that they're gonna yeah, it's made pursue. It's made it's made to, and this is like an, an off topic thing, but I like this conversation where this is going. School, I think, is made to memorize information that you will essentially never use again as a tool to like, I don't know. It's just the way it's set up is not like we were talking earlier about the the like how I like to teach lessons to an individual kid. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I only get to understand that kid a little bit better. Yeah. I wish school was designed more that way. Yeah. Because honestly, dude, like, I, if I never took math, like, it would have changed that much for me. You know, like, if I never took. What if you took like a community organization class? Like, right, at that, what know, if they? Uh, what if you even had uh, access to you know something I mean? that was just more up the alley of like, yo, this kid is gonna like look what he's doing. Like, he's gonna do stuff like this. Let's Don't put him in a in a biology class. He doesn't right. need to be there. Like you know, he doesn't need to go to biology. And it was. And He's it was not like, gonna be a biologist. I mean, maybe right. know the basics. You know what I mean? Right. But it was one of those things where like it didn't matter because I was good. I I I as a student, I'm sure you were the same. I was good at doing the classes. Yeah. I was good at getting good work. Gra- good, yeah. good getting the work done and getting good grades in the classes. But like I look back, even college. You half of my college classes. I'm like, dude, I did not need that. You just go through the motions. You're yeah. going through the motions. Like that's yeah. not what school. School should be, I think, to design more on an individual kid basis. And I kind of was hoping that, and I don't know that it's going to, but I was kind of hoping in a in a weird way that this COVID thing would disrupt education to an extent. I uh, feel that to to no, do to, to do stuff yeah. like that, you know, because you now have to like see what a kid's doing on Zoom or whatever, and yeah. like. Like, can you, like, be a little more individualistic about what this kid is doing instead of, like, all right, they got to pass the Regents exam, so every <laughs> kid's got to learn this information, so they, you know, I don't know. I think it, I think this whole, you know, pandemic and being in quarantine for school has put it into perspective of, like, wow, like, we send our kids to school, like, five days a week to just sit in the classroom and answer some questions and, like... That's they all have to learn the same information. Same information, and then not that it's 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 just it's like a, just a one swab of like, you know what I mean? Like you don't really get to pick like, and obviously like it goes back to like going to college and knowing what you want to do with your life. Like even at that point, you don't know what you want to do, but like just being like, here you go, oh. this is what you need to learn. Good luck. Yeah, I mean, good luck, dude. You're expected. 
in in America, and I think in a lot of other places, because I know we have a couple uh, people from the UK in the chat. Like you are expected to basically like grow up at twenty two years old. Yeah, it's it's like it's not really that kind of eighteen, but then twenty two is like. You're done. Right. Like now it's like 18, you go to college, you, they, you pick the thing you're going to do, and then 22, you're out on your own and you're an adult. And I think that at 22, you should be an adult, I will say, in the sense that you should like start to figure out your independence a little bit yeah. more and start to grow up. But it does not mean that you are about to settle in on, especially in our generation where we're probably all going to live to be 120 years old. Because I hope so. Technology is going to I'm trying to do so the three far, digits. Bro, I'm trying to do three digits. Yo, you're going to tell me what I have to know be doing for the rest of my for the next 80 to 90 years of my life? Like no one knows that and I think that in your 20s you absolutely and I'm not even I'm not even saying there's a cap at 30 cuz there's not. There's no cap to when you figure your shit out. But I think that in your 20s you guys anybody like people should just try Everything. Yeah. Just try anything that you yeah. think you might want to try. Just yeah. try it. And give it a good solid shot. See how it goes. And if it's no good, cool. You move on. You figure out the next thing. Um, you know, honestly, this podcast being one of those things. It's just like just, just try it. You just had an it. idea to it, just try it. Just, just do it. Just give it a shot. See yeah. what happens. Like, you don't know. And then like I don't know. I think that that's I don't think that we should we should be because we were the type of kids in high school that were, dude, like, I wasn't going to figure my shit out by the time I was 22. <laughs> I'm still, I'm 27. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. I'm trying to do for the rest of my life. I don't, uh, I'm figuring it out. I know. I, you know? I know. But, all right, so moving on. Let's move on to do that. That was a good, that was a good little. little uh, side tangent. Side tangent about side education. Tangent. All right. So, I don't remember where we were, though. So, oh, so you said the show. Uh, w- oh, wait, hold on. Let's, let's, let's f- hit in with Anthony really quick. Anthony, and and if you're listening past this, we're talking to somebody live on the chat. School is great for a lot of people, and I don't dismiss school at all. I did school. I went all the way through college. I got a, that's what I'm saying. I got a yeah. master's degree, dude. I I uh, I really went through school. School is great, and there's a lot of great parts. I met some of the best people I know. My, yeah, some of my greatest true. friends are from school. Yeah. Um, I met some of the greatest teachers from school. That's true. I'm not trying to shit on education as a whole. I just think that it's not super designed. As from a personal standpoint, it's not super designed to. F- it's not a one size fits all. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think it should be treated as a one you size know what? fits all. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna challenge that. I'm sorry. School can help in some ways, but I think it does more damage than, than good. But there's a big difference between schooling and education, though. Yes, 100%. You know what I mean? I think, yes, I think that's yes. where I think, I think we're shitting on the concept of schooling as opposed to the education concept of education. Massive. You should continue education to learn. Education goes on. Learn forever. I learn every single day, dude. Yeah, you that's know, a difference. That's a, education. I think you, that is like the, the big yes. takeaway from like, you can't just write up. You could say, and that's what I'm saying that. So you, like, I don't want to, I, like, as long as we said this is a side tension, this is kind of important because. You know, you said you're expected to grow up at 22, right? Like, but up until 22, you're being hand-fed knowledge that is just, this, oh, we're telling you what to know. We're telling you what to know. We're telling you what to know. And then you, you're like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Why was I doing the Pythagorean theorem when I was 15 years old? I have no idea. I don't, and you don't have I don't anybody e- to ask because it's just like, it's like. It's what you do. Yeah. I don't, and it's just like. You're, and, you've and been, wait, I want to stop you yeah, for a yeah, second. Yeah. Some kids need the Pythagorean theorem because they want to be mathematicians. That's a different story. That's and that's some, a different some story. Some kids need that. Some kids love that. That's but great. they should tell you, That's like, amazing. yo, you're gonna know this. That's amazing if it's what you need. But they don't. I don't feel like they don't even tell you what. Like, not that they don't tell you, but I feel like that we need a little bit more accountability from. I don't know if it's teachers or uh, don't blame anybody. But I think there's no, it's, there, the, it's, it's some, a system. Dude. It's yeah. It's it, the there's entire something. Lo- place, yeah, because yeah. I think teachers mean well and they want to get through to their students. But it's like we need to get through to to teaching why we have. Why you're learning things? I think it's a. It's, you, you know, know what I mean. You, you and know it has to be squashed for that to happen. Testing, testing. Like there should be no yeah. regents exam to get to the next thing because teachers have to ta- teach you to a test. Right? Yeah. Right, sure. and then that's that ruins the whole thing because now yeah. you have to teach. What test thing? have I taken in life? I mean, besides like just taking a test to do something, but I never just like I'm never just like like going about my day and then just being like. Like sitting in my car and then going to work and then like a test being in front of me. You know what I mean? Unless it's related to that work. I'm never like no. hanging out with my girlfriend or like going for a drive and then like a test appears in front of me and I have to take it. Like, you know what I mean? What does that prepare you for? 
It prepares you for taking a test. And don't get me wrong, there's some kind of benefits to taking a test, but you're right that that becomes the major emphasis. Yeah, that the edge that the teachers yeah. teaching just to make sure that you pass the regents because at the end of the day, you're no longer their responsibility. You're no longer the system's responsibility right, yeah, once yeah. you pass their test, yeah. and they want you to pass that test because their their your your public school education here in America is being funded by tax dollars. So obviously they got to show for some kind of sign that you are we're we're setting you up into the right thing, but. Once you're 22, it's just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, dude. Unless uh, you take yeah. some, unless unless after even 18, unless there's some kind of initiative for you to even want to consider the school, nobody's forcing you to go to school. But you're being forced to go to school from pretty four, much your whole four life. Four to 17. Yeah, pretty much your whole life up until that point. So it's just kind of like a like, and then I feel like you need some time to just be like, what the f- what what just got. What just got put into me? I was talking to Candace about this last week on the podcast, and yeah. we were talking about how like a gap year between high school and college should always be a thing. I'm kind of reading this. What yeah, is this? yeah, I was looking at that too. So Dunn and One in the chat said, "I still don't know who that is because they won't tell me, uh, but they they're they're in here a lot." But it's Mich- Michelle Obama said something I really liked. She said, "You should never ask a kid what they want to be when they grow up, because it implies that growing up stops at some point and yeah. that you become something, and that's all there is." Yeah. And I, you know, that's true. Tr- that's totally true. And I agree with that because here's here's a real life thing. My dad, we were just talking about my dad upstairs. Yeah. He just retired yeah. in February. Yeah. He's fifty four years old, and now in in the reality, you're like, oh, you're retired. That's it. Like you, right? Yeah, like yeah. that's what, like that's what you're fed, right? Yeah. You get your job, you work thirty years, you retire, and then you're on vacation. Yeah, dude, fifty four. <laughs> Like the guy, pro- bro. If he lived my life, he has another twenty five years. He's he has, still eighty. He has forty. Probably <laughs> he has years. my. He has my life expectancy and then some. Right. Like to, he, it's time to now. You can completely. You're do what you want to do. Do anything. Like just do so. Like you know. And he's thinking about starting a podcast, which is cool about that's like, cool about Kiss and heavy metal and that's old school cool. hip hop and stuff. <laughs> but but yeah, he's, that's what he's been talking about. And I'm gonna get him hooked up. He wants to start soon. Um, but, oh my but, goodness. But that's that, that's the thing. It's just like. You're never done growing up. She said I would follow that. Yo, dude, follow my dad's <laughs> podcast. It'll be, it'll be coming about out soon. Kiss, metal, and hip hop. My dad is a big. My dad got me into half the stuff I like. But, <laughs> um, yeah, man, you never, you never yeah. grow. You're never done. You're ne- there's no time. Like we're twenty in our twenties, dude. Yeah. We are no. We have no reason to feel rushed to do anything yeah. bro like there's no rush yeah if i be if i you know i got a degree in teaching i don't at this point at 27 i don't think that i want to be a public school teacher i feel that i, I don't feel think that. that that's a that's a move that i why I, yeah what because you're just you're like you went to school to to be in a school and not knocking that as a career because you could do so much but i i respect that and like look at where you are in your life you're 27 you have so much that you like you have so much time and so much so many other things that you want to do that to get into that classroom that is just again preparing kids for a test or well i mean it's a little different for, for you uh, for cuz it'll be music True. and there there's no standardized testing True. for it yeah but um but I think it, so. It'll be it'll be different than that in that aspect. However, I just like I don't know, man. Like the idea for me personally, and it's something I've been thinking about. You know, obviously in the past couple of years, but like more and more, even more recently, is just like I'm so much more excited creating something from nothing and yeah. making it into something. Yeah. Like I'm really excited about like building something from the ground up. Yeah. And that excites me as a career way more than. Going. Being a being an employee, technically, almost being like being an employee, yeah. And like I like I would rather another thing. We're talking to my dad. Been talking to my dad about. It, I was like, I'd rather get a space and like open yeah. up a, my own music school and yeah. venue or, st- or or something, you know, than like than than work in a so still in education, but just a different uh, medium. Yeah, because yeah, then I also get to teach whatever the hell I want to do. Like yeah. it's whatever I want it That's to true. be, you know, like. And the teachers that get hired, whatever I, I can te- tell them to do, whatever I want, think should happen in my yeah, thing. Yeah, under you your know? thing. Yeah, you know, like this is what we do. It's here. not like yeah, it's not. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's it's it, it's pretty clear, and that and that's the problem with like not to keep on bringing this back and be like that's the problem with school here. But there's a. I think you're right that you could probably have a little bit more of an impact 
in a private education system maybe or at least starting that that that's going to take a little bit more time where you know maybe getting a job in a public education system might be something down the road that you would consider because yeah. you'd look at it as like you know what I'm also I've already reached out to my students maybe I could reach some students that don't have access to me or that I would never be coming contact with and the only reason why and that's why Yonkers is such a it should be such a thriving education system because of the diversity in it but it's like it sucks because like there's no there's no funding you know what I mean could you imagine like Dude, they're, well, cu they're cutting eight music teachers and that's this year and that's the other thing about being a music teacher in the public schools I just kind of like I the reason one of the reasons I don't feel comfortable or even like it's just not valued, man. Yeah. Like I don't want to go and be like some. It's cut. You're, you're cut. like you're a second-rate teacher. Like. No. <laughs> school of punk, bro. Yeah. Now for music school. No, but for, for real, dude. Like I don't. Like I don't want to be some second-rate yeah. bank teacher. Like, oh, not you're not that important. You get cut because there's no standardized test under your thing. When like, yo, if I didn't have music in school, bro. Like if I seriously, I didn't have Mr. Pazienza and Mr. Selickson, Like those guys yeah. really helped me get through high school. That's what I'm saying. And, and they helped me get through high school. And could you imagine like their perspective of like you know what I mean? Like being them being exactly like us and being like I don't want to go into a public school because imagine if they didn't do that. Yeah, they wouldn't have changed. My, you know what I mean? Imagine they weren't course. just like imagine they were uh, the the whole thing that I was just sh that we were just kind of just like shitting on in the system, and them just being like, I don't need, I don't want to go into there. You know what I mean? Obviously, they they went into there for their own reasons, but could you imagine if they didn't? Because we would have never been able to meet an individual like that. We would have never been that individual would have never been able to come into our lives, and I don't know. Yeah, and I and I still like respect and keep in touch with those guys to this day. That's I sent awesome. I sent Mr. Pazienza a T-shirt a couple months ago. <laughs> Yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah, dude. All right, so uh, moving on, I guess that yeah. was that was a good conversation. I like I like side that. tangent to the side tangent. No, it was good on. though. Yeah, yeah. Um, so moving forward, uh, you you graduate school or we graduate school, we get out of high school. We kind of already are doing the DIY thing. Um, you know, we're booking shows, and then you started Sawmill. Yeah. Um, which was your band with Nick Regis and James, and you had a bunch of different drummers. I'm still in high school though at that point. Were you still in high school? Yeah, because they graduated. Oh, wow, that's fine. They were in Manhattan. So you were in a band in high school then? Technically. Yeah. I mean, like, probably towards, it was probably, like, towards the end of high school. It was probably, like, toward, like, but. The senior year. E like, even probably towards the end of that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was senior It was, like, year. we were kind of, like, going into the summer of my senior year. I remember we went, it was, it was there, it was Nick and James's prom, and I went to their prom. As like a, as like they a, were a year old. So yeah, for context, yeah, yeah. I'm two years older than Phil, and James and Nick were a year younger than me. So, so I, when I was them. a senior, you were a sophomore. When they were a senior, you were a junior. Boom. Cool. So you're graduated. They're here. I'm here. Top of the totem pole. Senior year, right? They had their their uh, prom, and I went as a hired gun. And I just went, and they all recommended me because they were like, "We want Phil to go. Like he's not in our grade. Like just bring him." And I was like, "All right, fine, I'll go." No, I didn't, you didn't have to put a gun to my head. But they were like, all right, fine, so we'll take Tom? him. Yeah, I forgot who I even went with. But they were like, oh, no, I went with uh, Susan, George. Susan, George. Like, I didn't know Susan, but she was a friend of all theirs and was like, my date bailed. And I was like, boom. Okay, I don't, I'm not sure I don't even know who that is. Okay. But anyway. But so I go as her prom date. It's all fun. And I remember Nick was like there. And I remember he was getting off the – or he was on somebody else's prom bus. And he knew I was on a bus. And he was like, yo, like he got on our bus – and they were like, anybody that's not on our bus, get off the bus. And he's there, and he's not on the, he's not supposed to be on the bus, but he's drunk at this point. Regis? Yeah, Regis. It's his prom night. He's like, yo, he like, he's like, where's Phil? Where's Phil? He's like trying to get on my bus and be like, where's Phil? I want to talk to Phil. And some girls like, get off our bus. And he's like, Phil. It's like, you hear this? He's like, we're gonna start a punk band after high school. He's like, and it's gonna be awesome. He's like, we're gonna play shows. He's like. This is it, man. He's like, I'm done with high school. He's like, but you're, he's like, we're going to, I forget what he said. I was like, all right, I got this. Like, I remember That's being awesome. like, okay. And then, uh, so we started playing some shows. We start, I never heard that story before. Yeah. <laughs> so we started playing. So it's me, him. <laughs> Fredo said he didn't have a prom date. Dude, we could have, you could have been my prom date. We went to the same Maintenance prom. 914. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, Maintenance 914 didn't have a prom date? Well, it sucks to be you, no? <laughs> So, uh, kidding. I I don't mean you yourself, Mister. 
Fredo, but I mean maintenance nine oh four. Maintenance nine oh four was was in even a thought at that point. No, no, but we'll they weren't even they weren't going to prom. We'll they were a little there. baby. We'll, yeah. We'll get there. Yeah, they're no prom. They weren't we, even qualified. We shout for out prom. maintenance at least once on every street. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's always in the chat. Always in the chat. Uh all right, yeah, so that's awesome. So then you guys started So we started ban. And you started sawmill. Yeah. We started ban. Our first experience. I mean, it's always nice because it's like we had friends. We were all they were all going to your school. So we had the connections. We're playing at at Damon Hall, all at Manhattanville. Um it was just cool. It was like this is, you know, what I mean, I, like again, I'm still, I'm still immersed in it. Yeah, and that was that was the time of like One Fell Swoop was a yeah. band now. So yeah, that's my old band for anyone who doesn't know. But uh, and Brandon was your age. Brandon was my age. Right. So we, he was in our like yeah. our band, and then you, yeah, and then yeah, Nick yeah. was, and I went to college. with ended up going to college with Nick. Um, and then yeah, dude, that was a good time. We we threw a lot of shows, and that was between like, I want to say like twenty. 12? 2012. And like 2016 was that era, I would say, of, of uh, well, the last one fell swoop show was January 2016. Yeah. I don't know how far past. Oh, Sawmill so- Mill did. Uh, Sawmill Mill went probably until, I want to say 20, 2015. Yeah, so yeah. three years. Yeah, it was, uh, we were in the same era. Because they, because then James, who now plays in maintenance, was going to school in Long Island. He found a drummer. That lived in Long Island. Right. And Nick and I would come from Manhattanville. So he would come all the way from Manhattanville, pick me up, go to Long Island to practice on like a weeknight, I whatever. Remember, I remember that. Stupid. Because I, I lived with Nick, Yeah, too. dumb. So, and then I kind of, I, I I hate to say it, but it kind of just like, it like faded away. It was like a band that, it just didn't seem like it was going to do anything because of, of the restriction of that. So I, and I take responsibility for myself for being like, kind of, Letting it happen, you know what I mean. Not saying like I let it happen, but I was just like, I wasn't making an effort to to pull the pieces back together because it just seemed like it was just like kind of just like fizzling away. No, right, right. you know what I mean. Um, so at this point, I'm playing with musicians. Uh, my buddy Nick Bonfiglio, uh, yep, yep. super talented drummer. Um, one of his friends, and we started linking up and going to a studio just like late at night, and just playing until whenever and it was so funny because i was just thinking about this the other day there was a guy that used to work there and we were young we were maybe like 17 18 and we used to go there and it was a three of three of us and we used to jam and like hang out and the guy'd be like yo you guys sound tight he's an older guy you go you guys sound like cream like he'd be like represent all these like dad bands he'd be like yo you guys sound like cream whenever you guys want to come in here let me know i was yeah, like clapped i was like thanks bro and then uh Get it. and it would it'd be so funny because i mean being so naive at that point, I was like, yo, this guy really likes us. But, like, I, I don't know if this guy maybe had a problem with, like, financial things. But he would always be like, he'd be like, yeah, I kind of need money. Like, he would always, like, try to sell things, like, super, super yeah. cheap. Like, super cheap. But he would always hook us up with studio time. He'd be like, and that's why he didn't work there anymore for a, long, for a while. He'd be like, oh, like, uh, I, I, we'd be like, how long? You, we're, we're like, all right, we're done. We're closing up. We, we, we'd be there like from like 11 to 3. And, you know, studios just around that time maybe charge like, I don't know, 25, 30 an hour. You know what I mean? So we were maybe like, we probably started jamming around like, you know, and, and he would only charge us for like two hours. He'd be like, all right, what? how many hours were you guys there? We we're like four. He's like, all right, I'll charge you for two. He's like, how much is two hours? He'd be like 60 bucks. He'd be like, uh, give me like 15 bucks. And we'd be like, uh, sure. He's like, yeah. I'd be like, all right. We just kind of just stayed here for like four hours, kind of just hung out, drank some beers, and smoked some of your weed. But <laughs> you know, like I was like, all right. So every week we would just go in there and like, like, and if it's just always so funny, he'd be like, how many hours were you here? Three. All right, like three hours. Like nine. Give me like twenty bucks, and I'd be like, okay. Like, here you go. Like, that's all we need. And then that that was at the time where Sawmill was kind of fading away. And he was like, yo, you guys are awesome. And, and it was at prime time, and it was it was a big-ass place. So, I think they knocked it down, dude. Oh, they probably did. I heard that. I was talking to some, someone. mentioned it to me the other day. They f- probably did. Yeah. What, a, what a fucking... Yeah, because we were going to rent across the street, and that whole street, I was like, prime time was, was on that block. And I saw the buildings that were maybe next to it that were knocked down i didn't even go further enough to look at if prime time was closed but i was like damn like i mean and and this guy that we used to rent from i, I remember 
so I'm going into college at this point. So because sawmills kind of fading away, and and I'm in college, and you know I'm I'm now at this point I'm I'm seeing Diana. I just met met my girlfriend at the time, and we're we're both of us are going to. I don't mean to say like my girlfriend at the time like that. It was past tense. Like we're not together, but I'm saying at the time we were meeting. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I gotta just you're cross. S- you're still with Diana. I'm still with Diana. I gotta cross all my T's. I gotta dot all my I's when I come on this podcast. I made sure, you know. Um, so we're we're all going. We're and I, uh, we'd be hanging out with like 30, 40 kids from the college, and I'd be like, like, what are we gonna do? Like we don't, we like you know like some of us can't go out to a bar. I was still like maybe I don't know nineteen at the time, so we couldn't go out to a bar. So we'd be like, I'd call up prime time, and I'd be like. Hey, uh, do you guys have any availability tonight? And he'd be like, Yeah. Uh, what time are you looking to come in? And we'd be like, I don't know. It'd be like six o'clock. We'd be like, maybe like two hours from now. He'd be like, Yeah. How many people you got? I'm like, like forty. He'd be like, Oh, uh, do you want to rent the big room? I'm like, Is the big room open? He's like, Yeah, sure. Just go in the big room. Forty people would show up. I'd be like, Nick, come. I'd be like, Forty people just came here. Like. Like everybody's just chilling, like all yeah. straight, like like last super last minute. I'd be like, like you know what I mean? It'd be a Friday night. I'd be like, well, we could go to a studio and just hang out there and drink there. Everybody's like, yeah, we'll go pick up beers. You guys will play. So we started doing that. You know, I can't believe I never went to any of this because it was like our, it was like literally last minute spontaneous yeah, college. So I, our college, it, like, and it was like it was weird because it was like so Diana, you had like a lot of you had like a, a crew in Westchester Community College, kind of because it was an orient. It would always be like you know how like you go out with coworkers. Like yeah, I yeah, was yeah. part of this orientation leader crew. Okay, so yeah, like yeah. we, you know what I mean? Like they they do the whole orientation and then like I, did, I didn't realize. I honestly didn't realize that you had like a crew over at WC. I have friends. That's cool. I socialize outside of. Good for you, man. <laughs> I socialize. When you. I don't talk to you, I also talk to other people. <laughs> you know? You have uh, your I made sure I turned off my phone for this, but it's usually on, and I'm uh, usually texting people when we're hanging out. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, you know, it was cool that, like, it was like we were all, it's like one of those things where, like, you, you meet a bunch of people for, like, two weeks, and then your friend, and then, like, you you grow super close with them, and then you don't, and then you go to college with them, and then they just become, you know, community you college. You haven't seen them? Since? Yeah, I mean, I go out with Diana still, and I keep oh, in course. touch with You're all them, you know. Her, but. but it was still like it was just like one of those things. Like it wasn't like me and all my friends. Like let me hit up AJ. It would just be like, yo, like I'm literally here with like 40 people. We don't know what to do. Like what should we yeah, do? Yeah, no, no, I got you. And, and I'm not. I'm. Not, I got no FOMO, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you do. I think you do. I got no fo- I, I got- I'm getting a little bit of vibe of FOMO. <laughs> that he was like, why was it I invited to this impromptu fucking? <laughs> bro, I, you didn't invite me to your party. <laughs> you didn't invite me to your impromptu party at Primetime Studios where you paid fucking 15 bucks bro, for. You didn't invite me- I'm just kidding. Uh- <laughs> He's like, damn, fifteen bucks, man. Like, where is this guy? Uh, that's tight. So, all right, okay. So you. So you, we're doing that. Yeah, you did that. So oh. that was going on while Sawmill was kind of going on. So I was like, honestly, I could call a place that's literally ten minutes from my house and have a studio booked and not pay shit, or should have thrown shows in there, bro. I know, but I but and that, people, but damn. but I know, but age, hey, listen, man. Uh, so so at this point, again, you know what I mean? I'm playing in Sawmill. You know what I mean? And again. They're going to Manhattanville. You're still doing a thing at Manhattanville. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it's kind of, I, I still don't know where I'm at at this point. I'm just starting to play. I'm kind of just technically still in my first band. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like. Uh, you're like, playing the field. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing, I'm not booking shows. I'm not doing anything besides no, just course. showing up, playing the shows, going to shows. You know what I mean? But like not knowing how to do any of that or or just being like, that just seems like I something. Still, I still don't know how to do that. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's, <laughs> um, that's you know I what I mean. Still get yelled at for my show. Shut the sh- <laughs> that's uh, actually okay. Um, so I'm I'm booking. So now I'm not booking any shows at this point. I'm just you know what I mean. I'm just showing up and playing music. You know. So sawmills no longer thing. I'm like ah fuck it. I'll just I'll just jam. You know. Yeah. And um. You know, and then I see what, so I'm going to say around 2016, I graduate college. Uh-huh. So all through that time, I'm just kind of just playing shows with you guys with One Fell Swoop. Sawmills kind of playing shows with One Fell Swoop and doing a thing. And then I stopped playing and I still finish my community college education. And it's like 2016, I'm going to say you probably got the donk, no? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like. 2017? The, the, no, the first show was. Yeah, the first show was December though of 2016. I got October. I, lo- I signed my lease. The the first show was December. Yeah, 2016. Yep. 
right? So I'm not playing in a band at any point, and and now you have at this is now my first friend that has now gone into like renting a studio. I mean, obviously there was the rug room right next door, you know, yep. and I've been to shows there, but this is like AJ. I went to high school with them, and like you know, what I mean. This is one of my friends that I've seen as like a kid and not having shit. There he is, Mr. B- the Heavy Metal. Yeah, my dad. <laughs> Welcome. My dad is in the chat, guys. Chia, cha 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 chia. Um but so now so you have your own place and I'm like I'm I'm wondering, I'm like this is cool, you know? But I still don't have any I, it's like it's a it's a weird like journey. I'm not playing in a band at this point. Yeah, but that's true. I you know I not, never. I, it was like a weird. Uh, that whole year was weird, man. Because I met I met a lot of people in that year. Like the one fell swoop era of my life was where I learned. Uh, you know, thanks for clipping it. My the one fell swoop era of my life was where I learned everything yeah or i just learned i, feel you. I learned a lot you know yeah. I, I learned about that was like the one that like like the one that like you went out and did it and learned in the process i learned it. i learned how to book a tour i learned how to book shows not I, by just learning but by actually doing it right yeah i learned about bringing touring bands in i, yeah. learned, I learned about all this stuff and how like diy punk rock culture just yeah, because, worked. oh wait and and i like this it's funny that i'm like making it seem like oh like you got the dunk and like this is your first time throwing shows <laughs> no, no. I'm like you're already throwing shows at this point no, for like yeah, ten yeah. plus years. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's no, not like whoa. No, no I didn't. Th- I didn't take it like that though. But what I'm saying is that like I learned it all before then. But that year in the donk, like in that physical location, yeah, I uh, was a year that I met a lot of people that I didn't somehow never ran across in those years. Yeah. If that. You know, like, cause like you were just saying, like you weren't playing in the band at a time, but I, a lot of the bands at book, man, I never like, for lack of a term, yeah, I, they were flowed at the time. I didn't know any of them before yeah. before that. I didn't know, I didn't know a lot of the people that I ended up encountering in that time p- frame of my life, which yeah. it, I mean, of our lives, but like, cause honestly, like I very c- much consider that like a, uh, I don't know, I, you know, just like it was supposed to be a, a space for. All my homies, you know, know. like the crew that, like, and that was that was that was that was mind blowing for because I was so used to. I mean, how I was introduced was the the Jewish community center that you had to that that you couldn't. You had to buy a spot. You had to rent a spot for the night. So it was like cool to be like, whoa, like our friend is doing something that's like kind of like specifically like geared for this. That's a that's a pretty big deal. And I was like, and I'm still at this point, I'm like, I'm not really playing in a band. You know, I'm still like unsure about what the, what I want to do, you know? Um, so what is this? Like 2016, 2017, you're, you're opening up the donk and I'm still going to these shows. And, and I, I never, I always felt like, did you ever play a show there? With Chugga. Oh, right, right. But the last so, show. Yeah. But check this out. Right. So, cause now 2017, you're starting up the donk. And I'm like, yo, this guy's, AJ's got something going on here. I was like, that's cool. And I was like, but I, and I was like, what, what can I do? Like, and, and I, I, I go through this, this stint, this period of my life. And I think I'm kind of going through it again, especially with coronavirus, where I feel like I'm so sometimes boxed in by the fact that New York, like I'm, I had this like midlife cri- midlife crisis at 20 si- 2017 where not even a midlife crisis but like yeah, a, a mid band crisis where i'm like yo like i'm already this age this guy has this thing going on i don't even know my ass from my elbow of how to book a show meanwhile i, I lost like that's a different story $10, that's uh, we're not dollars. talking about but, but that no, i just, want, I just, no, want, I know, I just I wanted you to put that into perspective I know. of like you feeling like of course. oh like this guy's got this it's like bro that was a it was no. a, it's a major win for a commute on a community standpoint and, and, knowledge, and a knowledge standpoint it was a major loss in a financial standpoint and i lost you know i lost a lot of money yeah. doing that but so so i'm looking at it like damn like and and uh i graduated from community college i had no drive to go to finish up a four year i still haven't finished up my four year right. i haven't gone back to school i did the community college only out of necessity because what we were saying before when i was in high school you had to fill out the paper, and my whole class, my English teacher wanted to keep a tab on every college that everybody was going to. I was the only one that didn't fill anything. I was like, I'm not going to school. Uh-huh. 
I was like, I don't know. I'm just not going. To, I just said I didn't make a decision yet. And she was, and then like she pulled me aside and was like, you should really decide. So and I this was in high school. Yeah. So but now so I went to community college and then I finished up the community college. So now we're done with community college. You have your own place. I have no ambition to go back to school. You know, some of my friends are finishing up school. So I'm like, what? And and again, it's like this. It's like this weird thing that I go through. It's like it's a stuck point. I want to say it. that's the that's the term I want to use. It's a stuck point of like. I'm in the I'm in the greatest geographical location for what I want to do. I mean, I'm I'm in the heart of New York. I'm and and I have the 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 luxury of having New York City in my background. In in my in my like in my It's right there. In my backyard. Yeah. So um, I still feel like we don't utilize it enough. But. No, we don't, but but like but so I'm like, you know what? Like and and we don't, but I'm like it's right there. How like what am I doing? I, I I just felt so trapped here in New York. So I'm like, you know what? I'm like, fuck it. I'm going out to California. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start school out in California, and I wanted to be the first one like out of our friend group to think like I was like gonna go out to California, be, and because I was like so Dude, much. I respected the hell out of that though. I couldn't. I'm scared to do something uh, like that. But that and that's where I'm like I'm at that point now where I'm like I I feel so trapped sometimes because I'm just like like. Like I could literally like look outside your house and be like, "There's the Empire State Building." You know what I mean? Yeah. And and it's it's a, it's a comfort thing of it just being like, and and I don't know if it's a comfort thing because it's it's real it is, but like I I needed a way to figure out how I could break that comfort thing of being like, "Yo, my buddy's killing it here in Yonkers. I want to be equally killing as much as I could be doing, but I just don't see myself doing that because it's like, what the fu- what do I do?" So I had to put myself out of my element. So I go to California. I'm in Hollywood. I'm I'm taking music classes. I'm like, "This is cool." And the entire time I'm there, I'm like, "This is stupid. Go back to New York." Like yeah. like this is like especially if you're going to go to school. Like you're you're I don't want to say it like at idiot i would uh, me myself you're not an idiot to go to school out of state i'm an idiot if i went to school out of state just because it was like there was no reason for me to you know what i mean I, I didn't i didn't feel like if i wanted to live out of state sure but get your education in my in my um this is me talking to myself i'm not telling anybody that's listening to your chat that you're an idiot for going but i'm like phil i'm gonna say phil is an idiot for going to 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 want to go to school out of state he should probably you know what i mean I'm talking like Ricky Henderson. I don't I, like. No, I I'm it. I'm getting all used to this 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 podcast. Uh, I got you, bro. Keep talking. <laughs> You're good, bro. There's no limit. I'm trying, this. but because you, you're killing it, and I'm like, damn, how's he killing it? Is he, is he using? Is he talking about himself in the in the right tense? You know what I mean? <laughs> that it doesn't sound out of context. Like Phil, you are a piece of shit, and then all you just hear is you are a piece of shit, and everybody's like, oh, like who is he talking about? You know? Oh my god. <laughs> so all right, t- tangent. Sorry, tangent over. So California. We'll cut all this out. Jamie's got it. I'm not cutting anything out. <laughs> so, California, I'm like, at the whole time I'm there, I'm like, you know what? You got friends in New York. New York's in your backyard. What are you doing? So I come back revamped. Re- revamped. And I'm like, you know what? I was like, and it was funny because I, I was like, oh, like, I, I, I was at that point in my life where I was playing like months, months, like day after day after day after day after day, like hours a day, like locking myself in a room of like playing and and being at a point where it's like in L.A. Because that was also another culture shock of being like I was living in a hostel and I was like, I don't want to go home because all my roommates are home. I share a room with five other people in a bunk bed. I was like, and honestly, nobody's at the school right now and i was like during the day i was like everybody's home at my at, nobody's home at my hostel and i was like during the day everybody's home at my school at everybody's at school so i would i would wait at the hostel all day i would sleep until like five at night i'd wake up i'd go to school around six at night i'd stay until one and be like yo like not feel safe enough to walk home in la with a guitar and all my pedal boards because i didn't have a car so i'd be like I guess I'm just going to stay for another seven hours until it gets light out or like at least, at least five or six and then just, and then literally go like bring food to this, to the studio and like, cause it was a 24 hour, like either like pack something like, you know what I mean? Or, or go down to the cafeteria, like buy like, they had like a little like student room and like microwave, like a little burrito or something like that. Mm. But just, but try to, and that was the cool part about that. Cause I was like, I put myself so much into that, that I had nothing else to do besides that. I had no, that's a cool time though. I bet you learned a lot. And it was it was cool to see because I was like, damn, like 
I wanted to come back here so much, but I was like, how much of this could I get done in New York? Yeah. Realistically. Yeah. And 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 I and I'm still struggling with that because I'm like, I have all these resources, but I'm like, all my friends live up in Yonkers. I want to just hang out. You know, I don't really want to I feel that way sometimes though. So it was yeah. So it was like it was it was it was like what it, what is it gonna have to take? And I and, and and I thought at that time in my life it was me going out to do it, like you know what I mean? That I had to experience it elsewhere, you know. But then I so now I'm I'm back puddling here and here we are. So I'm there for a couple months. 2017's finishing up. You know, you just started up the dunk. You had the dunk for what? Two years? No, no, I only had it for a uh, year. My lease was a year, but I I signed my lease in October. They gave me a free month, so I was there till the end of November. Okay, so then this guy it was October 2016 to November 2017, and then I did. They tried to get me to resign, but it was a year, another year, and I was you know. You okay, know, you know what? Yeah, happened, yeah, yeah, bro. It was just so you went from from December 2016. I'm just trying to just get dates in my o- head. October 26. Uh, December was the first show. Yeah, so December 2016 to November 2017, which sounds like it sounds like there was so much cool stuff. Cause there was November of 2017 or or November yeah. of 18, 17, dude. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, okay, it's, so it's, check it's, this out. It's, it was crazy. It sounds because I think there was like forty five shows, so it's like whoa, like that's there was so much time, but it really wasn't that much time. Wait, so hold on, because now my whole time frame is thrown off, right? So now I'm coming back home. I'm in California, and I'm reaching out to you, being like, I'm coming back home. Like I'm, I've had enough. I was like, and you, this was 2017. Yeah. Oh, so you were gone for a couple of the months. Oh, right? wait, wait, no. Then this was maybe 2016. Okay. I'm all fucked up with my with the years. All right, so I'm in California at this point, and I'm like, you know what? I, I'm coming back home. And you're like, oh, like, it's cool. And, I, and I'm following all my friends on, on social media, and <laughs> one day I see AJ make a post. He's like, hey, like, uh, met this guy at the skate park. And uh, or or you're like met met Dante at the skate park and he's friends with Richie and like they recorded a single and I did vocals over it and like you posted on the Facebook I was like this is cool like you know what I mean I, I but said, it's funny because as soon as we did it I I had a few people in mind that I knew would like dig it yeah because we needed a <laughs> bass player and I was like I know the few people in my head that like would like this yeah. kind of music so I see it I'm like cool I'm like this is cool so then I'm like you know and and you you hit me up and you're like. I'm actually starting up kind of in a band and we're like kind of looking for a bass player and like the original members from Sick of It All and it's all like hardcore like heavy shit and like Dante's played with who the fuck knows and I'm like that sounds pretty dope not gonna lie like and it just seemed like it just fell into my lap like I just literally came back from California I felt like I felt so revitalized because I did that too because I was like damn like I just came home and this was right there I was like hell yeah right so, um, so I'm like, fuck it, I'll take a gig, and I was like, I'll play bass because I was coming at that point too. I was just, I was hungry. I was like, I'm back in New York and be home. Like, I just want to just play and just take advantage of everything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, any opportunity I get, to just play, 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 play. Take the first one that came, and I was like, that's a good one. So then, Chugga's doing the thing. I mean, I'm kind of learning the Chugga songs, and then, um, I know Costa. Because Costa was renting out the rug room, with for lack of a term. Yes, and and I rem- it's funny. I remember, um, I remember you. So I remember you telling me. Um, Do you hear that? Yes, sounds good. Cool. A little, a little music. What about now? I oh. mean, not in the mic. I'm saying in the headphones. I do. I hear it in the headphones. So yeah. The li- the li- oh yeah. Look, you can see it on the thing too. Watch, watch, watch. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, so uh, I remember you telling me. So I had float, uh, for lack of a term, play uh, play the dock a couple times. But I remember you being like, "Yo, this dude Costa is yeah. like, is like really good, and he's a really good singer and guitar player." And I'm like, "I think I'm gonna like play with this dude," and uh, and I was like, "Oh, word, that's cool." And then, then I remember seeing Costa. Um, I so I remember seeing him play the Santeria cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that was the only time I saw him sing, and I was like, "Oh, where at the at the at the dunk?" Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I was like, "Oh, dude, like that guy <laughs> can sing." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "That's sick." Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't know him, man. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't really know any of them. It's funny because Ryan told me he was intimidated by me <laughs> <laughs> at the time. 
<laughs> him of all people. I feel like I feel like he's got nerves of steel. That guy does comedy and like yeah. but that guy literally is I'm the guy intimidated that would, by him. He's like the most artistic person that'll literally oh. like like he'll be like, Hey guys, like here's my poetry. I'm like poetry, I'll never put out it in it. Like you're gonna you read my personal writing? Like, no. But yeah, no, I remember you, I remember you that time and I and He's not I, a poet, I don't think, but he's a comedian and he's funny though. Yeah, yeah. But I remember that time. I was, I was gonna say you were like, I really want to start playing with this dude. Yeah. But, but, so, so yeah. So now, so he's renting out the rug room, and I don't know Costa because he's renting out the rug room. I only know Costa because he's friends with Nick Bonfiglio, and like that's funny. I didn't realize that that was a connection. Yeah. So Nick Bonfiglio and I, Nick Bonfiglio hit me up one day and was like, "Yo, like let's jam, like let's play." I know he's like, let's start something. I remember I would just always, or like back me and him back and forth between like the like the brainstorming of I'm like AJ's doing this thing. I'm like, you know what I mean? Me and him are like, who would want to play with us? And we're like, who the, oh who knows? Like this guy's in a band. He's like, I know who. This is before I go to California. He's like, I know who. He's like, I got our boy. He's like, I know this guy Kenny, and I know this guy Costa. And he's like, Wall jam. And I was like, all right. And we jammed. And I was just kind of like, I mean, at that point, I didn't know what we wanted to even do. I didn't even know what I wanted to write. You know what I mean? I was like, whatever. At the end, and I'm always, I would always play covers with Nick, and we would always play like bar gigs. Yeah, and, we did, we did that. Before. Yeah, we all. Like, I, I hopped in with yeah, you guys. Always do like a bar. We always had like a. He would always call me for like a bar gig, and we'd play like a Friday night in Yonkers, like on McLean Avenue, and like, or I'd sit in on a song that they'd be playing at like the River's Edge or in Yonkers or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, I don't know, like. We jam once. It's cool, you know? And then it just, like, kind of just, like, I don't know what happened. It just kind of fell off, and uh, I think that's when I went to California because I was, like, I'm, like, what am I going to be doing? I was, like, I don't know what these guys want to do. Like, they seem to be having something. They seem to have some chemistry, and I just felt, like, so disconnected at this point. So I left, and then I come back, and then at this point, Costa's jamming with, for lack of a term, and he's, like, yo, like, I'm starting a project. He's, like, I'm starting a little side project, in for lack of a term, do you want to play? And I'm like, okay. I remember that. Yeah, he's like, what do you want to play? And I'm like, I might just play bass because I'm like, honestly, I'm I'm like, I'm playing with Chugga and I was like, I have no bass gear. <laughs> I'm like, I have no bass gear. I'm like, I'm literally using all of AJ's stuff and like an $80 bass. I'm like, let me just rock with the bass for a little bit because I came back and I was like, I'm not, I wasn't like trying to be like, I need to be known as like a bass player. I was like, just get your, get your, just get playing. And I was like, I could have played, and I didn't want to overcomplicate it. I was like, all right, play bass. Just rock that for a bit. So I was like, I'll play bass. So it's me. It's a three-piece. Me, him, somebody else. And then... What the fuck happened? Oh, you're just telling the story of maintenance now? Yeah, I guess that's where it kind of goes from I feel, there. I feel, like I feel like that's where we got to there. Yeah, I feel like I got it. Like you, That's it. That's how it started. I mean, that's how it started. You played bass, and then you had... Uh, me, him, and Neil were playing. You, him, and Neil, and then and then it moved out. Neil moved out, and, and then and then it was Andres. 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 Yes, yeah, yeah. He brought in Andres, and then he brought in Crispin, and then Andres had to go. He had to go back to Colombia. He's not here. Yeah, he's not here anymore. And then you got Frank in, and uh, that's it, man. That's the well, not really. Cause well, Crispin, they, Crispin, Crispin left. Did, Crispin dipped down. Then you were guys were at three piece yeah. for a minute, and now you picked up James and you moved back to guitar. And it was funny because I remember I had that conversation because we were. I was like. We were getting along really well as a three, like me, Frank, and Costa, and uh, and we were getting cool gigs at this point because I I knew a buddy from um, I I I knew this guy Iman, and I know his brother Josh, and I know Chris. Chris I went to college with, and they put me on, and they were like, oh, like Josh was like my brother raps if you want to play for him, and maintenance was doing it. We would just play like. We had no music out. Like, you know what I mean? We were just like such a spontaneous. It was like we all, we kept on playing. We weren't trying to record anything. The only time the only thing that we did record was because of like time constraints and and Andres is like was going back to an, another country and it's like, "Well, we might as well record." So, now Frank's in the band and we're just like playing off an EP that he's not even on. So, I'm like, "What the what is this?" you know? So then Iman hits us up and he's like, "Yo, I need a band." I'm like, "Yo, maintenance should just do it." I'm like, "I don't even care at this point. I'm like, we should just be like the band for Iman, I'm like, do you mind if like our band does that? It was like we could probably just get tighter, you know what I mean? And and I feel like it would give everybody kind of like a sense of like, 
you know, it was like a cool thing. Like we were getting a gig for like as as musicians at, and I was like, and so we did it. We backed up Iman, and it was such a cool thing to feel like, damn, like we were playing the hip hop stuff, and it just felt right. You know, it, it didn't, it didn't, it never felt like. I I'm, I'm just say that with maintenance in general, it never felt forced. It was always like a project. You know, I was still referred to it as like a side project, of, for lack of a term, because that's literally how I like to keep that mindset. Which it's funny because it hasn't changed. But it's you know it's it's become something that's very no, real. For yeah, all of, you guys. of yeah. course. Yeah, but 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 the but the ethos has never changed. Like the 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 take it easy mentality. It, it's never. It was never. And that was the cool part because I was expecting to come back from California and being like I went and saw L.A. and I was like I want nothing to do with like. I was like, if I want to be noted as a musician, I would rather be known in my hometown, making it with my homies, and then go over there if I wanted to because it's beautiful. But I was like, I was like, L.A. I, I my heart wasn't in it for like to be like recognized as like the L.A. Like I was like, it just seemed very like superficial. Not saying that everything in L.A. because I and then I met a bunch of real people, but my experience it was so short that I couldn't tap into something that I already tapped into here. Here. You know what I mean? Like, look who I'm playing with now. You know what I mean? 100%. So, and it was it was a full circle thing for me to realize that I didn't need to go out that far to to find what I was looking for here. And I I hope that what I have here could just I want what's here to be as available over there and feel like it is here. You know? And that's why I think maintenance has that kind of like it, it's always had that kind of like that mindset of like have fun. Like, don't dude. That that but that's. Because it's crazy, because maintenance, um, to me, maintenance is like, I don't know, man. You guys are like the band that really uh, brought brought a lot of like happiness back into like what our area is for me. Like, because I, I feel like, you know, that, that two, like we were talking about that 2012 to 2015 era was like a really awesome. Yeah, you like, guys it, fucking killed. <laughs> well, it's not even, I'm not talking, talking about us. I'm just saying like in You general, were killing it. But I'm just saying like uh, that era of like just feeling like I had like a ton of friends and like yeah. this was like a community. Yeah. And then not that the, the year at the Donk didn't feel like that because it absolutely did. It was just changing. Yeah. Right. It was, it was getting, it was becoming something different. Yeah. And I didn't. Uh, I don't know. I was trying to figure, like, kind of navigate it, and then, like, I don't know, man. Maintenance for me is, like, maintenance came, and I was just like, man, like, this brings back that sense of just, like, have fun, community, don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. That's it. That's Because that's, cause literally he Just was fucking make fucking... Yeah, th we have a command. It, it's... It's cool. Alfredo was yeah, here. Yeah, and it says Alfredo was here. We also have the yeah command now. If you look, it goes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, but yeah, but maintenance, like, really for me, um, you know, man, it's just. It's, it has for me, too. It's all, it's just about, it's about the the fun. Don't take it too seriously. Bring beach, Always. Bring beach balls. Bring. Always. Fuck make, around. Make memes. Fuck just around like, first like, before you, but I mean, take it serious, but fuck around because. Don't take, but, but be. Be let's go back to it. Be yourself. Yeah. Or just be like be consistent and, with who you are. Just yeah. Be co like, cause so many people try to like, I don't know. They try to like change their appearance for like the band they're in. And yeah. I don't mean I don't mean physical. I mean like, just like <laughs> in general. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good. I like that one. Um, but no. But seriously, like they people try to ch just be something they're not. Yeah. A lot. And I got that vibe from LA. Not that I got that from everybody, but I just saw that a lot because, especially because I was out of school for musicians, it's like you see that a lot, and you see that yeah, here. You, you 100. I've seen it here more recently, unfortunately, but yeah. I, I feel like it's more of like a. I know I weeded that out already. I, I weeded it out, <laughs> and I weeded it out in my head now. And when but, I see it, I immediately like recognize it. Yeah. And I'm just like, for me, it's just like, okay, well, that that's not about like what I'm about. Right. right, like you know, like it's not about like if someone's trying to do something for like a community or something. That's cool, dope. Right. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Uh, if someone's about them, it's it becomes way less. I just don't. I don't. I just don't care for it. Yeah, I feel that. And and like I noticed that in L. A. Because or not that that L. A. Was like that had that going around prominent, but I just felt more comfortable as a New Yorker. Like yeah, uh, I, I felt yeah. to be like. Where L.A. just kind of seemed like it was so beautiful. Like I didn't like where in New York it was like it just seems so much more real to me because it is real. It's like my experience. It's just like concrete and like buildings 
and just like city life and and LA is is not that for me and i was like you know what if especially if i'm going to like i i loved california so much i was just like this fucking place is so beautiful i don't want to have to go through i feel like i could when i came back here it was like i could go through the the motions of like a of a of a a a, a non successful musician you know um in new york i'd rather do it in my hometown you know what i mean i'd rather do it and, and then feel like I had to go out there to prove myself. Yeah, you because you you because you, you'll never prove yourself out no, there. I I I I, no. I, I you, hit you, a limit. You shouldn't ever have to prove yourself. Yeah, I think I think that. Um, I wanted to. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We do. We all have wanted to, and all. I like. I. You know. I think we still. In, in we do. Ways, yeah, yeah. Of course we do, man. But like, I think it's uh, more. I don't know. I think that the people that are always like actually successful. One defining success is an interesting thing because you should define success as happiness. Yeah, that's the only definition of success. I, I mean, but yeah, I mean, def- the definition of success. I really believe that. Yeah, def- it's just a, if you're happy, and you're, it's all tuned to what your it, happiness is, though. You're happy, uh, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes, of course. If like you need certain. Things I used to, to get yelled at though. I'm sorry to interrupt. I used to get yelled at for always saying that. If what do you want to? How do you want to be successful? You want to be happy. And I used to get yelled at. That's why I'm just saying that. Well, by who? Uh, someone I used to go to college with, someone that that he would. It was funny because there was a there was a motivational speaker. He would always pull up someone from the crowd, and he'd be like, "He's like, what do you want to be in life?" And he'd put the mic up, and they'd be like, "Successful," and he'd be like, <laughs> and then, and then he would look at the crowd and be like, "Isn't that nice?" And then he, he they'd give him a round of applause. He'd be like, "That's a terrible answer." He's like, "That's a terrible answer," but like as in like, of course you want that, and then happy. Yes. But Wait, would but, he go to that no, too? No. Or oh no, he. But he. But he'd be like, he like, it's it's more of of an attempt. Like he would always instill it to be us to be like, say more than just that you want to be successful and what happiness is because it's all catered to the individual. A hundred percent. You it's know a, what I mean? Like your success is different than my success. It's, it's all it's all different. Yeah. It's, but it's all happiness. Yeah, it's all happiness. It's just how aware of yourself you yeah. are. Um, but. No, yeah, I think that I think that that's, I think that proving yourself is stupid. I think being yourself is way more. Yeah. Because c- if you're always just yourself, dude, no matter what anyone says, yeah, you you're like, well, whatever. I was myself. Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? Like everyone, it stops. Everyone else's opinion stops mattering if you were complete. If you've always you're like, yeah, well, I was myself. So like, if they didn't like that, then oh well. Right? And, and I'm gonna be, su- and I hope, and I know I'm gonna be successful in the fact that I'm gonna continue to be myself and be happy. You know what's cool? Um, and and Riff, I, I wanted to tell a little bit of, of uh, I don't know how much time we have, but um, yeah, there's I don't there's really no time limit. You know, I don't know. We, we just keep on going. We've been going for an hour twenty five, so we'll really? wrap it up soon. I would say. Okay. Um, uh, but I, I feel like there's always That's so up. much to say, though. You know what I mean? It's like, what, can, dude, as uh, soon as I think I'm, as soon as I think bro, I'm, uh, I'm out and then I'm, I'm back in. Listen, bro, you're you're gonna be back on. Like, <laughs> let's be real. Episode ten, episode six, <laughs> yeah. part two. Um, no, so I'm thinking, um, we were just talking about something though, because I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to cut on time. I didn't know what we were talking about, but you were saying something Success about and happiness, yes, and just being yourself, yes, and. And then, and you said that you try something and you do it, right? Oh, earlier. What were you just saying about about that? You, if so, I was saying, oh no, about you being yourself, and then if someone doesn't like it, then yes. don't worry about it. And I came to that epiphany when I came back here because I said, you know what? I have friends that like me for what I do, but I also have friends that like what I do. You know, and I, I hundred, I I felt that over the past couple of years, I've. I've started That's a to, big difference, bro. That's a dude. Tr- I start to rec- I've started to recognize who, who like, I don't know. Keeping your circle small is really important. Yeah. I don't know because I always just tried to be cool with everyone, and not, and not that, that I'm not not that I'm not cool with everyone. Like not that yeah. I'm not still trying to be like a good person to everyone, but. It's important uh, to focus on your main circle. Make sure that I, making sure like the people that I like are actually around me. That I'm like, yo, these people like. These are the people that I really get down with, yep. and like these are the people that I can see that our minds align in yep. a lot of ways, because there's a lot of people that, especially when you do things, like you do things like you're in maintenance and everybody goes nuts and people love it, or you run a venue and you run shows or you do things, you put yourself to that, like you put yourself out there in any extent. There's always gonna be the people that want to just feed off of that, 
Yeah. And then there's also going to be the people that are jealous of it. Yeah, that's true. And I don't think that's – and I had a good conversation with my buddy Chris about that. He was telling me – he said um, – Chris from the Happy Face Riot was telling me uh, – what did he say? He was reading a book, and he interpreted it to – is saying that you're going to create things, you know, and your intention is going to be whatever your intention is, and then how people perceive it is going to be different. You know what I mean? But 100%. if And if you know what you're creating – is is you gotta you know what I mean? It's hard to do that, you know, especially in this day and age where everybody has a voice and everybody's putting out stuff all the time, and you're always comparing it to other stuff. But if it's just true to you, it's probably gonna be okay. <laughs> like if, if if it's true to you the first time, I had a good. Uh, I keep on, I'm quoting Chris, and I'm quoting somebody else at the same time. Um, Chris said that if. You're gonna put out stuff, and you if you know it's genuine, don't worry about what everybody else is saying because you know in in your heart of hearts that that's what you meant. That's, you meant that's what you that's you 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 know if you if there's no regret there if it was you yeah. there's no regret yeah that and 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 you're gonna look back on it and be like this is awesome instead of you questioning and being like should I have done that like I should have done that and not doing it you know what I mean or doing something because you think that other people yeah. are going to like gravitate it. towards that. Yeah, which I think we are all, uh, oh, we are all, have all done at some point. Yeah, I think we have all made choices or created something or whatever because you're like someone else might like this. This is gonna, yeah, this is gonna, and that is this is gonna resonate with them. Yeah, you don't want to do that. No, don't do that shit. That's that's a that's a that's a dangerous. That's a yeah. That's it's a pandering. very yeah. It's, it's pandering. Yeah, I. All right, so let's let's end it here. I haven't. I had one thing in my head that I thought would be an interesting thing to quickly talk about. Wait, can I just? Because I just gotta just say one quick thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you do that, I'll do one. I'll do my sum up. Maintenance met. Costa was said this is a project. He showed me acceptance. Right. I was like, damn that. He said, what do you think? I said that is awesome. I said I I like that. I said I think a lot of other people are gonna like that. I said what else you got? And he showed me other songs. And then, so we start playing together, and I just wanted to just say this, because Maintenance 914, Alfredo, is just a mutual, I don't know if you know this, but main, uh, Fredo went to our school, but Fredo's known Costa for- Forever, yeah. I knew yeah. That. yeah. So it was just cool to, to, like, Fredo was like the first friend that we had that was like kind of like, knew what we were doing, because Costa was sending him all the, or like, he was hearing this stuff and being like, I like this. And it was like the first reception that we heard from like a friend to be like- Oh, like, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, and and so and he always and th like whenever it's nice to have that in your corner because it's like it's like it's always the four of us right now. It's me, Frank, James, and and um, I was just about to say Nick Costa. <laughs> and Costa, sure Nick. Um, he's not even gonna see this. So, the fifth member, but the fifth <laughs> but the fifth member was always Alfredo. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny, and then awesome. and then the sixth member became Jay when. We I drove him to a show at Sunnyvale, and he was like, I've been practicing my death vocals. And I said, you should do them with us tonight. And he's like, no. And I was like, yeah. yeah dude. I but, was like, you uh, should. I want you to recognize, man, that like those little things that you don't think of, because that's happened to me too in life where like I did something small and I didn't realize it. Yeah. But like you do these little small things, and it like- That changes it. It changes the game. Not maybe not maybe maybe not even for you, yeah. But for somebody else, for him, yeah. For and somebody that, and else, and yo, shout out Jay, but and, and shout out Alfredo. But like these little things where you're just being yourself, yeah. Oh, you know, you're just you're just being you and doing your thing, like any amount of negativity. And trust me, like honestly, dude, like I'm sure you've already faced some, but like. The more maintenance does things, the more there will be some level of negativity that you'll hear. Yeah. That you'll hear. Yeah. And any amount of negativity, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Because we know what. Because you know what the fucking deal is. You yeah. know what you're doing. Yeah. You know how you like have been, like you wanted to be. And this kind of actually brings me into what I was gonna say before. Okay. Which is the idea we've known each other. I didn't shout out Jared too. He's also he's like the seventh member of Slipknot. Bro, I, I love Jared. There's man. like twenty members. Jared of Jared went to every single Donk show. Dude. You're a member of Maintenance. You've played in Maintenance. I played guitar. You're maintenance. you're number eight though. I think AJ recorded the first uh, fucking. Oh, so he's number he's number eight. Oh fuck! There's a lot of members of Maintenance, but but really fast. 
why I like the guys and, and that these guys are, are good people. And I realized that because I knew I was like, this is a little thing that'll, that could help him. And it's cool because I see this, I can name 10 people that would easily be as, as like cool with me pitching the idea to them that like, you know how many other people I would have pitched that idea to would be like, Hey, like this kid's never done uh, vocals before. Matter if he gets up on stage where they would have been like, no, like, we're performing and all of them were just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and like, that's normal for me, but it was like so relieving to have that. So relieving to be like, yo, we don't have a guitar player. Can you play it? Yeah. Send me the songs. Yeah. Not like I need this. I need that. It's just get it done. Get you know it what I mean? Get it done because it's just, we're having fun, dude. We're not taking it that seriously, bro. People that, People like to take shit way, and there's a lot of things to take seriously yeah, in life. I agree, especially now. But like people, like I had to not start playing in fucking rock bands and start booking rock and roll shows to be a super serious fucking promoter. That need yeah. like no, dude. Yeah. I did. You did it because it's fun. <laughs> I did this shit because it's fun, yeah. and I like people, yeah. and I like music, and I like bringing people together. Yeah. So here's what I wanted to end up. What's up? It's the name of a maintenance song, Growth. Yeah. It's not, that's a, just a coincidence. Okay. But you and I have known each other for a long time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think that we just went through a lot of the shit that we, like, have been t- through, like, together, right? Like, and how we were young kids that were just, like, the goofballs that shouldn't have been in school. And, and I think, and now how we're grown men who are still, like, in a lot of ways, the same goofballs, but just, like... Yeah. You no, know, we we've, we've grown a yeah. lot, right? Like especially on the uh, like mentally. I want I was going to say let's ref- I would like to reflect on the idea. I don't even know how to word this. I'd like to reflect on the idea that you can be yourself, right? Like I don't think that you and I have really changed as people. I like 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 in a mentality but like we like, if you had projected where we were going to be when we were 15, it would be, like, probably where we are right now, right? Yeah, no, and, but, you, and you sound and look the same from 15 to now, and you're probably the same size, so. Same, yeah, same you. Same size, uh, same, same but, weight. But mentally and, like, understanding the world, yeah. as you get older, the growth becomes, like, if I heard things that I said when I was 16, 17... And I would probably be like, oh, dude, yeah. I, dude that was bad. Like, yeah. why did I say that? Like, that's so messed up or that's stupid. Yep. Um, but I don't know. I just think about it in the sense that we we are some, two people that have known each other for a long time. And I've seen a lot of growth with you. And I've, and I've felt a lot of growth. And I feel like we've grown together in a lot of ways. Um, so making uh, music in high school moments, together yeah. of just like you're making high school and you listen back now and you're like, bro, that's like really fucking bad (laughs) you know it's like and like i don't know just like you can be a a person that like i feel like everybody we we we're in a weird time in life where people are constantly i think it's a part where we didn't really have this when we were in high school as much at least it wasn't this developed yeah where we're in a weird time in life where people judge everybody else yeah right that's true and Mm -hmm. i think that because they don't because they're afraid to be i mean because everybody i feel like it's such a weird thing, I feel like, judging. Because I feel like everybody's so judging of themselves and they also think that other people are judging them. But Cause they you, are, Because they are, but they're also just because they're just like... It's like a, it's like an outward thing. It's like they're so insecure about themselves that it just comes off as insecurity and it's like... Right, right. Yeah, yeah and I and I think that, that... I think about that a lot. Like, yeah. a lot, a lot. And I just think of that... Like the, I just think about the people that I grew up with and I'm like... Man, like, you could probably go back and say we did a lot of stupid shit or said a lot of stupid shit or, like, but so did everybody else. Yeah, I know. Anyone that acts like a, like yeah. some, like, I don't know. That like, they're high on their horse, yeah. They're high, like, with, growth is real, dude, and, like, I think that I've seen you grow a lot. I've grown a lot. Yeah. And, uh... I don't know. Proud of you, man. Proud, Thank you. Proud of you. Yeah, I love maintenance. If you, if you don't know maintenance, um, check out maintenance. They are on all of the, the, the platforms that you listen to music on um their ep is great it's very colorful um and if you're here still in the chat and you know only know shake out you can just go to our spotify page and they're like the first one and the fans also that's like. true yeah <laughs> it's a pretty easy way to find it yeah man killer anthony let us know what you think yeah. um we're on 
social media at maintenance914. Yeah. Um, maintenance914.com, you know? Yeah, dude. Check out maintenance. Uh, I'll definitely end up having Phil back at some point. I probably should have, like, lined up a song to play at the end of this, and I didn't. So well, we could play the new song. My bad. <laughs> no, I well, yeah. Yo, are we getting an exclusive right now yeah, through I'm the microphone? <laughs> <laughs> Maintenance recorded a new song. Yeah, usually. But you know what, dude? When I say I should have lined up a song to play at the end of this, honestly, we've been playing your song at the end of... Uh, we've been playing the music video at the end of the ShakeOut stream every week for like... Yeah, except this one? Six weeks now because uh. we, we usually were like putting a new video in and we keep forgetting to. And then so at the end of the stream, we just put Maintenance. Well, that's got everybody in it anyway. I mean, like, if you look at it, it's just... I'm like, well, who is... I'm like... That's not even us. Yeah. But, right, yo, uh, yo, just followed you. Thanks, bro. To Insta. Appreciate Thanks you, for bro. listening. Um, be yourself. Do it yourself. It's my boy, Phil. Thanks for being here. Uh, love you guys. Cheers. Have a great